In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to show you that reading the Scripture is pretty easy. Or when you have it read to you, you can understand it. You can understand it pretty easily. So let me show you some things. This is from Matthew. We're now reading the Gospel of Matthew. During Pascha and all the way through Pentecost, we were reading the Gospel of John. But now we're reading the Gospel of Matthew. And the Lord says... Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not in any case enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you know what that means? What do you think that means? Some big words there, huh? Well, what's righteousness? Do you have an answer? Oh, do I have an answer? Um, so I think it means that... Um, that if you're like the scribes and Pharisees, you won't get into heaven. If you what? If you're like the scribes and Pharisees, you won't get into heaven. And what were the scribes and Pharisees like? Some of them, most of them. Bad, yeah, bad is right. They don't like Jesus. They didn't like Jesus. They didn't like Jesus. They wanted to kill Jesus. And, and they wanted to kill Jesus. And why did they want to kill Jesus? Because he was a good guy and they were bad. Well, that's pretty much true. That's pretty much true right there. He was a good guy and they were bad. They were jealous of him and they wanted to keep their power. So they were full of all kinds of lies and deceit. Deceit is when you tell lies. And they were mean. Uh, they were unfair. They were vicious. They were cruel. What is cruel? Cruel is like when you're mean to somebody and you like to hurt them. That's cruel. Right? So cruel is like if you purposely hurt somebody because you think it's funny. That would be cruel. Hmm? So we should be better than the Pharisees. Of course, there were some Pharisees that were good. Can you think of a good Pharisee? Um, no. Oh, we read his epistle today. St. Paul. St. Paul was a Pharisee. Yeah. And, he was good. and Nicodemus was probably a Pharisee. And Joseph, and Joseph of Arimathea. So they were good, but most of the Pharisees were bad. So we've got to be better than them. Okay? Yeah, we've got to be better than them. So then he says, You've heard it was said of old time, thou shalt not kill. Where is that said you shall not kill? Where did it say in the Bible the first time you shouldn't kill? They were written on stones. They were written on... Yes! We're told not to kill. Right? So of old time meaning the... The, the commandments, the Ten Commandments say you should not kill. Well, only animals. Yeah, you should not kill, murder human beings. So, and then it says, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that even if you're angry with your brother without any cause, you're in danger of the judgment. So being angry with somebody is like wanting to kill them. You ever thought about that? That's really true. What do you do when you're angry with somebody? You might hit them. You might push them, right? You might say bad things about them, right? Hmm? You might kick them in the face. Yes. So that's like killing somebody. It's like being mean to them, being violent with them, either with your words or even with your fists or with your feet. So it's a terrible thing to be really angry at somebody. Now, when you get a little mad and irritated, that's one thing. But when you're angry at somebody and you want to say bad things about them and you want to push them and stuff, that's terrible. That's a terrible sin. Hmm? And then he even says... Stop, stop, stop. Then he even says, Whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka shall be changed in danger of the consul, but whoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. And I'll translate that to you. Basically, if you call somebody stupid, it's a very bad sin. If you don't repent of it, you could go to hell. If you call somebody stupid. So it's very important not to call somebody stupid. It's very important not to be so angry at somebody that you say that to them. And if you do... You should say you're sorry. Or you, or you forgive. What? You should forgive. What's that? You should do? Hmm? What did you just say? You forgot. Okay. All right. So it's really important 
to not be so angry with somebody that you call them stupid or well, something. Like well, you might get a spanking, you're right. You might get a spanking. And you deserve it for sure, wouldn't you? You deserve it for sure. Yeah, basically children often do. Probably every single one of you has called your brother or sister stupid. I haven't oh. called my sister stupid. No, your sister's older than you, so that wouldn't be. But if you had a younger sister, I guarantee you, you'd call her stupid. Because that's just somewhat, unfortunately, what we do when we're children. But we have to learn. Yeah, Ezra, yeah, yeah. Ezra has. But then Ezra knows that it's wrong. And then he says he's sorry later. So it's not so much if you say stupid to somebody that, oh, no, you're going to hell. And that's not true. But if you live a life where you always are considering people to be stupid, then, yeah, you could be in danger of hell. And you don't know, and when Ezra's sorry, you don't know anything sorry about it. Mm. Sometimes. Sometimes. Or if you want to your head and bonk your head. Say that again? Or if you climb a tree and you bonk your head. If you bonk your head when you climb a tree? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't bonk your head. Because uh, you might make a hole in the ground. And you bonk so, your head. Now here's, an, here's another. Now let's get serious here. Here's another instruction from this gospel that's very easy for you to understand. I'm going to read it in the hard-to-understand way, but then I'm going to explain what it means. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, and first be reconciled with thy brother, then come and offer thy gift. So here's what it means. So, don't talk, don't talk. So, if you're mad at somebody, like you're really mad at somebody, but then you go to the, uh, and go have communion, you shouldn't do that. You should go and be reconciled with that person first. Reconcile means you go to that person and say, I'm sorry, or I forgive you, or I was mad at you because of this, and let's talk about it. You shouldn't just go to, the, go to communion and still be mad. Okay? That's very important. That's what this is talking about. Don't go to communion and have something against somebody. Be mad at them think bad thoughts about them. No, if you have those things, kinds of thoughts, you should go talk to the priest and you should get forgiveness and uh, then you should go to that person and apologize. Okay? Now here's something also more for the adults. Uh, if you read Blessed Theophilac, it talks about this. It's not immediately apparent from the text. Agree with thy adversary quickly whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say to thee, thou shalt by no means come out hence until thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. You can go sit down. So what that is, the adversary here is your conscience. It wasn't immediately apparent to me, but that's what the fathers say. So... Agree with thine adversary quickly. So your conscience tells you something, you better listen. And so while you're on the way with him, sort of your conscience is dealing with you, you will deal with it. You better act according to your conscience. Apologize or make some change, make some repentance, go to confession, something. Otherwise, your adversary is going to deliver you to the judge. Now the judge is Satan. The judge is not to be forgiven. And then what happens? People stop talking. And then the judge delivers you to the officer and you can be cast into prison. So if you don't listen to your conscience, that's basically uh, for the lifetime, that would be blasphemy against the Holy Spirit to not listen to your conscience. So it's a very serious thing to not listen to your conscience. I know that all of us, for some period of time sometimes, we might be angry, we might have a bad thought, we might have some sin that's recurring, and perhaps maybe we're, we're not repenting of it very quickly, or maybe not at all. Well, eventually, may it be that we do repent of that sin. Because if you don't repent of a sin, it's a mortal sin. It's a, it's a sin that leads to death. Because if you don't repent of your sins, the ones certainly you know of, now if you don't know of some sins... God is not going to hold you responsible for something you did when you were seven that you forgot about, or even for that matter, something you, 
you did when you were 47 that you forgot about. But the things that you remember, yes, God will hold you responsible for it. So we have to agree with our adversary. Oh, we just sat there. All right, so this gospel should tell you, you should remember, don't call people stupid. Don't do it. And if you do, apologize. That, it should, you should know that. And also, if you're mad at somebody or something like that, you should go to that person and say you're sorry. And ask forgiveness. And give your forgiveness to them. You can even do this as children. And if you learn to do this as children, then you'll do it when you're adults. The sad thing is there are many adults that don't say they're sorry. So we're always telling you guys, say you're sorry, right? We're always telling you that. Well... If you don't learn to say you're sorry now, you might not say it when you're older. And that would be a terrible, terrible thing. Now, Johnny, you won't get a spanking when you're, when you're bad when you're older. Right? Your mom and dad won't be there to spank you if you're bad. So you have to be the one who listens to your conscience and says you're sorry. God bless you.